What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. In Texas, a school district is embarrassed after a convicted prostitute is placed on a board. In New Mexico, a former police officer is doing what he can to help fight police mental health. And in Atlanta, rapper Young Thug's RICO trial is finally underway. These stories and more coming at you today, Monday, December 4th, on Real Life Real Crime Daily, and I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Everton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Just off an airplane and into the studio today. Right. How was the flight? I was in New York City. Well, number one. City. No one opened the exit door in flight on either of my flights, which I'm <laughs> you sat in I, the I'm very happy about in the seat, and they weren't going to try it. Um, no, I uh, I uh, I was back in steerage. I didn't have the uh, the great seat, but my steerage. my niece is married <laughs> and happily married to a good steerage guy. G7s, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we survived. Yeah, this is the G seven three seven. There you go. Operated by JetBlue, unfortunately. JetBlue. JetBlue. So it was good. The, tell us about it, Mike. I'm still drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Got like a 0. 0.25 yeah, blood alcohol level indeed. as I sit here. So I well, can't the, be held responsible for anything I say in this episode. Then that definitely means you had a good time. Which is the same as every uh, other episode. So, yes, indeed. <laughs> so that being said, let's get into some true crime time for Monday. All right, and we're going to start out in Texas, one of our one of our larger listening bases here at Tejas. If, you, if you're practicing Espanol, that's with right. Rosetta Stone C. slash Daily. What's C. that county? 50, that makes no sense off. how they say it. Uh, yeah. Bear County. Bear County. Yeah, Bear County. There you go. Yeah. The Godly Texas School District removed a woman appointed to assist with deciding things like age-appropriate material for sex education after learning she was a convicted prostitute. Yes. Yeah, in a town named Godly, that's probably not a... Right, not, not gonna right. Go over well. Well, and, it, it, you know, before I get into the, the meat and potatoes of this article, I want to tell you, who better to sex educate than a convicted prostitute. Right. I mean, I mean, <laughs> if you look at it on the other the world, side of that, right? she uh, she's probably knowledge. an expert. She yeah. Has well, the she has one, a PhD, a Papa who daddy. Well, they didn't see it. <laughs> the, yes. They didn't see it the way I did. And the woman identified as Ashley catcher side. Also, a whoa, whoa, whoa. what's her last name? <laughs> catcher side catch from the side. Catcher side. Catcher side. <laughs> Also, That's the extra, by the way. <laughs> That's, that can't be real. <laughs> it is absolutely real. She uh, also advertises online as an escort, but believe it or not, her escort name is different. I'm going to tell you that in a little while. Um, one site lists uh, one of her personas as uh, as active as of last month. So she's she was a prostitute while sitting on this on this board. The issue raises concerns for others about background checks in the Godly School District and across the state. We had no idea uh, what was going on in her personal life. She was always very friendly and personable. This from school board trustee Kaylee Lane. 
Mary Lowe of the nonprofit group Families Engaged for Effective Education commented that Catcher Side being a convicted prostitute and working on a council that recommends appropriate grade levels and methods for human sexual instruction. So that that was the actual uh, advisory board she was on. I don't see any community wanting that to be the standard of their school district that uh, from her. Catcher Side sat in on a school health advisory meeting in October, which the state requires by law for school districts to have in Texas. The councils are in place to provide recommendations to the school boards on a wide range of health education protocols for students. Uh, and Lane told a news station that she was made aware of Catcher Side's history of prostitution by Lowe and a nonprofit of which Lowe is a member. So Lowe was kind of being like a Karen. And right. yeah. <laughs> so Catcher Side can be seen in a godly uh, school district YouTube video of the council's first meeting of October. In the minutes, she is listed as a committee member, and the members are appointed by the school board. The district said that each member is a uh, is is an appointed position, and that she was listed as the not only the member online, but was also seen on video. So there was right. no denying uh, her actual involvement in all this. And the fact that she was wearing a g string wasn't and concerning <laughs> to anyone. That, yeah. that was look. A lot of people wear g strings. They ain't right. prostitutes, Mister Mike. Yes. Uh, ca- catch your side. All I mean, I you know, Woody wears a g string. I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. Raw dog. Uh, Catcher Side also reportedly served as a volunteer on the Family and Community Engagement Committee. In addition to those groups, she also leads a local cheerleading group. Parents started becoming suspicious of Catcher Side after she claimed to own multiple businesses, although information about the businesses could not be located. So, yeah, these moms are talking to her. She probably drives a Mercedes or something. Mm -hmm. And they're like, where's she getting all her money? Where do you work? And, you know, she she said she had a bunch of businesses. Somebody researched this. I bet you she got that position because of one of her clients. Uh, I'll suspect that myself. So out of suspicion, Lowe said, parents started to investigate her background. (laughs) So this is a bunch of people like, where's she getting this money? And learned from a search that one of her emails Email addresses match the same address as Lola Bria on an escort site. Lola Bria. She was also convicted of prostitution in 2012 and 2016 in an affidavit claim. She was also known at that as that at that time as Lola Bria. According to one escort site that advertises Lola, she was active last month and has client reviews from this year <laughs> dating reviews. back That's almost nice. a decade. Nice. When asked if background checks were required for any of the positions Catcher Side served in, the district replied, yes. It's another client that passed her through. Right. Obviously, the district would not knowingly allow anyone to work in a staff position or to volunteer with certain criminal convictions in their background. However, the convictions, and this is from the school district, I don't know if I agree with them, but they say the convictions would not show up in a background check because they were misdemeanors. Mm. Mm, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Adding that the school, uh, adding that the state need to look at this with regard to how people are screened when participating in schools. So yeah, but, there yeah. you have it. They in Louisiana, at least in, in these board members, uh, it like, um, I see that I saw our picture on, on, on before the, you have to pass, yeah, you, know, you have to go to state police headquarters and get fingerprinted, and then they run you criminal history. In certain positions, the, the, uh, I would have to polygraph like governor appointees and stuff like that. And right. And treat it just like a criminal background or anything else. But, you know, misdemeanors should show up. They, absolutely, they show up. There's a, the, you run, if I run you criminal history, if I run Mike's criminal history, I'm getting all his streaking misdemeanors and, yep. and urinating in public and everything. I was told else. that wouldn't happen. Well, no. You you didn't have this girl. Toga, so Toga. Well, this is a this is I, I'm just looking up to see how many people. This is a small town, so the yeah. total population is 1,900 people in this town. Well, well, there you go. There you go. You would think that 
Miss Catcher's side would have been called earlier. Working with us. Well, I guess it's not that far from Dallas, so she could have been. She was on the outskirts. Her her business could have been. I wonder if she had an in call or an out call. (laughs) But anyway, let me take you all to something that's more serious. Um, You know, I got a lot of history with this. I'm going to just get into it. So, uh, police officers jump from one chaotic and stressful call to the next one and often absorb the tragedy they encounter each day. Frank Ray, who's a former police officer and a country musician, is working to break the taboo surrounding officer mental health to stem the tide of suicide and alcohol abuse. Unfortunately, we sort of read an environment when it comes to this profession of suppressing the daily trauma experienced by police officers. Ray says, if you suppress those experiences long enough, they can manifest in unfortunate circumstances. Ray spent a decade as an officer in Las Cruces, New Mexico, before retiring and launching his country music career. Despite no longer working in law enforcement, he remains committed to his, uh, his police and family, which was underscored recently when the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund named him an honorary chief ambassador. I've always wanted to stay close to the community and have an impact and make a mark on the world, not just the music industry, but know that I did something good in the world, something positive to help out our society. Well, the former cop is now using this platform to spread mental health awareness and how officers can reclaim their happiness and well-being. He's working with members of Congress to expand the campaign and get more police departments and officers talking about mental health. Ray said suicides and struggles with mental health have spiked in recent years, but nobody really wants to talk about it because it's such a dark and heavy subject. A recent study found law enforcement personnel are 54% more likely to commit suicide than the rest of the population. I just covered a story the other day about uh, the four Los Los Angeles Angeles sheriff's uh, deputies that committed suicide in a 24-hour span this month. Um, you know, burnout from the job, PTSD, chronic illnesses, relationship problems, and depression were the likely top contributors for an officer to commit suicide. Ray said officers' mental health began sliding amid the 2020s wave of anti-police rhetoric that washed over the nation. And, and through his work with the National Law Enforcement Officers Moral Fund, he is working to remind the public that police officers are human beings who suffer just like everyone else. There are human beings And when you take away the political aspect of the whole thing and you humanize the people that are going out there and doing this, like I said, very often thankless job, you can relate with with that a little bit more. Ray said the fight to break the stigma surrounding mental health on the force will be long and suggested the first step to improve mental health is talking to friends and loved ones. We'll call it check up from the neck up. Just check on your buddy. It doesn't have to be the sit down one hour long therapeutic session. You can just be like, are you good? If you want to go out and have a beer after work or something like that, let's talk about it. While touring with his band, Ray said he frequently discusses and highlights the work of police officers and visits fire and police departments to discuss uh, his FRAY campaign campaign, and talk to officers about the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. Ray has also established decompression rooms in a handful of police departments where officers mm-hmm. can take a few minutes to recalibrate in a relaxing room complete with a massage chair and Bose sound system. Ray added that in addition to talking to loved ones when they are doing well, officers should throw themselves into hobbies like hunting, fishing, and hitting the gym. Well, I don't know, y'all, you know, oh, yeah, that's they taught me 30-plus years ago in the academy uh, naturally that uh, – we have the highest suicide rate, I think, other than dentists. I don't know why the dentists. Really? Yeah, yeah. And and all and what they also taught me, which I absolutely know to be true, is like 80% of the cops that retire are dead within one year it, for whether it's alcohol or suicide or whatever. The I was fortunate I would be able to be able to black out all the bad shit unless I something reminds me of it. it uh um, but I've I've lost friends to it. They've killed themselves, and and you know it's it's certainly there's a stigma. You're supposed to be this big bad Billy badass, and you don't you don't want to talk about you know having night terrors and shit and things that you've seen. So, right. But I encourage any law enforcement professional or any 
human being. I said this before, and I said again, maybe I should take this up as a cause. Don't kill yourself, people. Um, you know, just don't do it. Do you think? Look, do you think those decom? Sorry, Jim. Did the <laughs> decompression rooms? That's what I was going to say. Let me tell you something. The and this is I'm not throwing shade on it because I believe you should try different things, but you'd never catch my ass in one because I don't look like the P word, the, the, uh, <laughs> the exact thing I'm talking about. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, I'm not talking about my shit. The other thing is when I started, brother Pete Charlay it told me he's a longtime cop, but he's also a funeral director, and he told me he said. You need to keep one friend that's outside of law enforcement. I said, why? I said, because you're going to end up surrounding yourself with the people that get you and get see the shit that you've seen. And he was right. And, and I don't know. There's no answer, but just don't kill yourself. You could call me, right? Message me. I'll talk to you. And, you know, they mentioned also that they encourage, like, exercise, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Look, yeah. exercise will yeah, do wonders for your mental health. Absolutely. The, the, There's uh, no doubt about the it. The hunting and the fishing. The, the, actually, I think that's a lot of what I did, and I, mean, I back then I used to do all the exercise too. And uh, you know, if you focus on that, then you're not focused on hurting yourself or the bad shit that you've seen. That's right. Wow. Okay. Kind of different, y'all, but um, I think it's near, a great thing. Hard, and like, shout out to him for yeah, for doing what he yeah. can. Yeah, I don't know. Do you, you know no. his music? I'd never heard of. No, him. never heard of. Him. I'll have to so. have to look it up. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts that spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut, soy, vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And common like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Hey, ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's in your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have hormone harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of hormone harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says 
it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Let's go to Hotlanta. Hotlanta. Where, believe it or not, this trial is rated as the number one trial in Fulton County. Um, meaning there's more interest in this trial than the one with that orange guy that is coming up at some point. <laughs> Young Thug's racketeering trial began in Atlanta on Monday. It's been close to a year and a half since the indictment involving rapper Young Thug was handed up to a judge. And on Monday, the 27th, opening arguments in Young Slime Life's, that's YSL, Young Slime Life's RICO trial, have begun. In the initial indictment, Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis alleged that Young Thug, fellow rapper Sergio Kitchens, who's known as Gunna, and 27 other people conspired to violate Georgia's Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, known as RICO. The rapper is also accused of participating in criminal street gang activity as well as drug and gun charges. Prosecutors say Young Thug and two other people co-founded a violent street gang uh, in 2012 called Young Slime Life, YSL again, which they say is associated with the National Bloods Gang. The indictment says Young Thug made YSL, quote, a well-known name by referring to it in his songs and on social media. Atlanta Police Chief Rodney Bryant called Young Thug one of Atlanta's, quote, top offenders who needed to be taken off the streets. I mentioned that they had 27 plus Gunna and Young Thug, so 29 people originally indicted, but 22 of the initial defendants in the case have either taken plea deals or or have been severed from the trial. So this trial involves Young Thug and Gunna and uh, and four others. So uh, it's it's six instead of the original 29. Uh, The indictment details the 2015 murder of Donovan Thomas Jr., referred to as Nut throughout the rap industry, and the attempted murder of rival rapper YFN Lucci by alleged members of YSL that were incarcerated with them that happened in prison. Prosecutors have painted Young Thug as a gang leader known as King Slime, someone who calls all the shots and directs all the uh, gang activity across the entire enterprise. There's been much controversy in the case leading up to the trial. Probably the biggest uh, uh, event that has happened pre-trial here is that the judge, whose name is Earl Glanville, agreed to admit 17 different sets of rap lyrics that prosecutors will be allowed to use as evidence in the trial. These are lyrics that prosecutors claim lay out details of YSL crimes and are, in effect, a confession of guilt. Um, Young Thug, whose real name is Jeffrey Williams, was arrested back in May of 22, and since then the rapper's been held in jail after numerous bond requests were denied by this Judge Glenn. Hey, so we will keep you updated on what's going I, on here. I heard about this, and I don't want to interrupt you when you're rolling. I think, and this just fucking blew my mind, and somewhere in the indictment they said that he and his posse or whatever you want to call him, his gang, were responsible for 85 fucking percent of the of the crimes in Atlanta. How does that even compute? 27 people were responsible for 85% of the crimes. And look, Atlanta's, you know, no different than New Orleans or Baton Rouge or whatever when it comes to be. I, I, you're, I, you're, did you're, I get that you're almost No, you're almost exactly right. <clears throat> D.A. Willis claimed that YSL are committing conservatively 75 to right. 80% of all right. violent crime in that our is, community. That's crazy. That is crazy. And, and you know, RICO actually is not a Georgia statute. That's the federal law. The, uh, it can be applied in, in the state courts or whatever. And, and of course, it was brought around uh, uh, to prosecute the mafia back in the day as a whole for all their actions. And they look, you screwed under that. They, they get you from everything from jaywalking to murder and put it all in one ball of wax and, and do you. 
All right, we're going to go to Detroit. We, I think oh, we uh-huh. went to Detroit once today, didn't we? We did. Or did we? Uh, was we it did. yesterday? Or was it? That yeah. no, was Friday. That was Friday, yeah. It was Friday, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, well, you know, back at the landing strip on Monday after being there Friday. <laughs> <it's not> big... <laughs> right. That's right. Well, so we're, we're back there today, and security footage has captured two young girls jumping from a fifth floor of a Detroit apartment building after their mom's ex-boyfriend uh, uh, set it on fire. Nice. Yeah, huh? The video shows unidentified neighbors standing next to a mattress laid out on the sidewalk prior to raising their arms to catch the eight-year-old girl Mm. uh, who successfully made it out. The girl then looked up at the building where her sister and mother remained trapped before throwing clothes onto the uh, mattress to cushion their fall. The 14-year-old sister jumped out next, but landed so hard that she broke both her ankles and a wrist. However, she is expected to make a full recovery, Mm -hmm. thank goodness. The mother was rescued by firefighters who used a ladder. Her ex-boyfriend, 43-year-old Marion Scruggs, is accused of setting the apartment on fire. Security cameras inside caught a man believed to be Scruggs dousing the outside of the apartment door with gasoline lighting a cigarette, and then using the cigarette to light the apartment on fire. The person tried to kill not only his whole family, but any and everybody that was in the building. Scruggs was taken into custody within 24 hours after the incident. He has a long history of domestic violence. In 2019, he was charged for purposely lighting a girlfriend's home on fire, trapping her dogs inside, and killing one of them. It is not known if it was the same victim involved in the apartment fire. Scruggs is currently in custody on charges of first-degree home invasion, first-degree arson, and assault with intent to murder. His bail is set at a million dollars. And as for the Good Samaritans who helped the sisters jump out of the apartment window, city officials are trying to find out who they are so they can recognize them. You know, some people don't need your attention or the accolades, but we want to show them uh, that not only are they firefighters, EMTs, not only are firefighters, EMTs, and police officers heroes, but even citizens out there in the neighborhood, they're heroes as well, as well that from Commissioner Charles Sims of the Detroit Fire Department. You, you know it would have been justice for this asshole that um, – you ever seen the thermal imaging – of a gas stations where they check the pumps and, and I have actually you, seen that. Yeah. So, so you film it, um, gas gives off the, the fumes that you right. can't see. Right. And that's what's the most flammable part. Yeah. Right. It would it be sweet justice. This asshole's dousing down that, uh, outside of thing. And those fumes, if you could wash it, the thermal thing, the fumes and he goes light it on and the fucking fumes blew his ass up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he's disgusting. Fire. fire. One of that's the, what. That's worst one way. way I, yeah. I don't want to go choking fire, bro. I don't I understand, Woody. When they do these, so this million dollar bail is that? Why? Why is there any opportunity? Okay, everybody for bail? has. Everybody has. Because you're uh, com- uh, you're innocent until proven right. guilty. Everybody by has. Court. Listen, and, and, and this, this sounds fucked up, but it's true. Everybody has. A, a, a right to a reasonable bail. The uh, circumstances where they give them no bail is when, when they can prove that um, because of past behaviors or whatever that you're going. If you get out on bail, then you're going to commit other crimes and be a harm to public to the public. This guy, they're figuring mm, we're giving him a million dollar bail. He can't make that. Right, it has he, the same a, effect. Right. Because they'll never be able to make bail. Right, right. It's just the same thing. But, and later on, they'll come back with a bond reduction here and all that bullshit. I, mean, I used to go to those all the time. But he basically committed the same crime yep. years prior. Yep. I, I, I guarantee you they checked his bank account and he doesn't have access to $115,000 to pay a bondsman. And mm. if, if I was the bondsman, I wouldn't take that shit. I wouldn't because he chances are him showing up slim. Listen to this crazy story, y'all. I mean, crazy. Sandra Jimenez, 44, of Miami, Florida, is a jealous woman. How jealous is she? Sandra's so jealous that she's liable to do just about anything. She catches her boyfriend's eye wondering to take a look 
at another woman. Things escalated on Saturday night when Jimenez took action against her eight-year live-in boyfriend. She has now been arrested for plunging needles full of her dog's rabies vaccine into her boyfriend's eye. (laughs) Figure that out. Why? Because she said he was looking at other women. Wow. When Sandra and her unnamed boyfriend arrived at their home uh, just before 10 p.m., Jimenez seized her chance to teach the man a painful lesson. When her unsuspecting bow laid down on the couch, Jimenez jumped on top of him with two rabies needles that were for their dogs, and she jabbed them into his right eyelid, according to the police. The victim called the police and was taken to Jackson Memorial, where he met with detectives. Jimenez said she left the house after she realized what she had done. She was arrested later that night when responding police officers found her sleeping in her car outside the house. Without batting an eye, the 44-year-old suspect claimed that her boyfriend's ocular injury was self-inflicted. Now, let me tell you something. (laughs) You're a bad motherfucker if you can stab yourself in the eye when you need it, right? Yeah. Uh, Jimenez was booked in in the jail on charge of you know felony aggravated battery, but she bonded out. Uh, but it's under house arrest, right? Crazy. I, hopefully that story. relationship is is over. He he yeah. got himself out of there. But I got another question. What kind of dog? What's going on with your dog? Yeah. he's got to have rabies vaccines. Hey, I just want to tell my wife don't get any ideas. Yeah, this is how you, ideas. Yeah, ideas. I can't stand needles okay. either, bro. Uh-uh. I've been doing all my bad shit on the show. And, well, and uh, as far yeah. as spots for needles, that's about as shitty a spot as you could possibly oh, that's think of yep. to take one. They have guys in prison cut their whole eyeballs out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Scoop them out with sharp and spoon and shit. They cut their Achilles heels. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, I don't remember going. that one, yeah. Bloody ain't going. The Hill Street game. Yeah. Like 30 something of them did that, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. And we're still talking about today, so that attention worked. Yeah. yeah. Dang. 142 years in the making. Look, someone. Well, ain't going. <laughs> I was going to plug it all the way. You got to watch it. You piss a woman off. Just stab you with a. Put your eye on the wrong person. We talked yeah. about some cyber crime the other day. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you a little story that takes it all to another level. And the name of this group is called the Gay Furry Hackers. You know what? I seriously don't know what the fuck you're researching when you find shit like this. But go ahead. You don't. You don't. So I, don't, I say to my wife all the time, I, you don't sca- want to get actually, inside of my I was, head. I was, I was say, I'm kind of scared of you. you I'm not going to ever get, get to sleep when you're in, in the same room that you do. You don't want to get inside of my head. Um a hacktivist group who describes themselves as gay furry hackers broke into the Idaho National Laboratory, or INL, nuclear research lab and leaked the names of researchers online. The leaked data included full names, date of birth, email addresses, and physical addresses, and was posted by the hackers on their Telegram channel. I'm not familiar with Telegram. You guys familiar with Telegram? I've heard of it, but I've never used it. Telemundo? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 Telemundo. Put, they put the names is on Telemundo. The, is that the cock? <laughs> Telemundo would hey, uh, hey, no, it'd be Univision would I be was on the cock. My, uh, hey, real quick, uh, this because you, I was uh, hanging out. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble meal kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, siapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something. And all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box 
right to my door. So see what a difference GABA will make for your household. Right now, they're offering my listeners a fantastic limited time deal. You get $120 off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G O B B L E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you've never had. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You've got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge, just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. We'll say hanging out with my dad. Uh, mm. Mom was out of town uh, um, over the holidays. And I was showing him how to work the, the TV and the apps and stuff. And he wanted to watch Yellowstone. And the uh, only place we could find it was on the cock. And and I made him remember. I said, Dad, when you I'm gone, if you want to watch it, go to the, cock. the cock. And that came from you. <laughs> oh, if you steal from me, you've, it's been stolen <laughs> twice. Um, <laughs> the hackers claim that the group has accessed hundreds of thousands of details for users, researchers, and citizens. Although no nuclear research data was leaked. Security experts said that it was disconcerting that the names of America's top nuclear researchers had been leaked online. The gay furry hackers made no demands for money for or anything else. And security experts suggest that the hackers may be committing these acts, quote, just for fun. Experts believe the members of gay furry hackers are all between the ages of 18 and 25 and get some kind of demented kick out of doing what they are doing. Um, GFH, gay furry hackers, GFH's MO has been to leak data from organizations like NATO and not demand a ransom or make any demands afterward. The Idaho National Lab confirmed that it had been the victim of a cyber attack with a spokesperson saying that they were still trying to determine the extent of the breach. The spokesperson said Earlier this morning, Idaho National Laboratory determined that it had what that it was a target of a cybersecurity data breach affecting the servers supporting its Oracle HCM system, which supports its human resources application. So everything an HR department would have was hacked, and these guys have it. Uh, INL has been in touch with the federal uh, law enforcement agencies, including the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency to investigate the extent of the data impact in this incident. The Idaho National Laboratory has been around uh, uh, and involved in nuclear reactor research since 1949, and organizations have built more than the organizations built more than 50 nuclear reactors at this site. The 890 square mile complex employs 5,700 people. So this was a major, major hack. And these guys go, I mean, they, they actually uh, have a variety of social media accounts. Nobody knows who the heck they are. They yeah. wear these uh, crazy costumes so I'm and go they the don't ask say, for anything. We did not name these people the gay furry hackers. They named themselves. Mike did not make that up. I, I was uh, consulted. We love they everyone. Cons- they consulted with me. Uh, gay f- furry I mean, I don't get it. Yeah, they're all in like bear and, I don't know, chipmunk costumes. <laughs> kind of. Obviously, some smart people. Crazy. I don't know what their point is, though. Well, we're going from um, gay furry hackers to actually a, a really sad uh, story here. Two men have been charged in the weekend shooting that wounded a suburban Chicago police officer after he responded to a reported car crash. Raul Perez, 24, Blue Island, faces one count each of attempted first-degree murder of a police officer, attempted aggravated vehicular hijacking, and armed habitual criminal in connection with Sunday's shooting in Bedford Park, southeast of Chicago. 
Uh, Luis Gonzalez, 22, of Chicago, was charged with one count of attempted aggravated vehicle hijacking. The Bedford Park police officer was shot early Sunday and hospitalized in stable condition. He was wounded after officers responded to reports of a car crash and found a heavily damaged car that was reportedly stolen from uh, Chicago. Surveillance footage showed two people fleeing the wrecked car moments before officers spotted them getting into another car at a nearby gas station. Police officers approached that car, and one of the two people inside would not comply with the officer's commands. A struggle followed, during which Perez uh, fired several shots at one officer, striking him several times. Horrible, right? Well, and and it's absolutely horrible. Yeah, these you know you're responding to a car crash. You're not going and doing a, a door knock on a convicted right, right. felon who's wanted for drugs where you're whatever. expecting this. You're responding to help someone. And, yeah, and I had, in Chicago, you know, which has all kinds of problems. Another story you just reminded me of a buddy of mine responding to a car crash and got shot and got killed. The um, I don't know, fuck now. Uh, prayers for the whoever. You Absolutely, and thankfully he's yeah. he's uh, he hasn't passed away. So yeah, uh, from all the reports I've read, it looks like he's going to make it. Yeah. Uh, but horrible. So let's go to another story. And I actually saw this one online. Uh, interesting. And, but a 12-year-old boy has been placed in juvenile detention after he stole a forklift truck and led police on an hour-long chase in Michigan. The boy, identified only as Ann Arbor local due to his age, stole a construction genie GTH 636 telehander at Forsyth Middle School on Saturday, according to the police. Um, maybe he was celebrating the... Michigan's win over Ohio State? I don't know. Authorities say that the boy hit 10 parked vehicles mm. during the pursuit. Officers responded to a call reporting an attempt to steal the truck and found the boy driving the vehicle, which weighs about 35,000 pounds without any lights at 6.48 p.m. Multiple officers initiated pursuit of the vehicle at speeds of 15 to 20 miles an hour with, <laughs> with emergency <laughs> lights and sirens on. During the pursuit, the driver of the stolen vehicle traveled through Georgetown Boulevard neighborhood, striking approximately 10 parked vehicles. Police stopped chasing the boy after 30 minutes as he drove across the M14 bridge. And then uh, deputies with the Washington County Sheriff's Office picked up the pursuit and followed the vehicle until the driver decided he had had enough fun and stopped at 7.53 p.m. Mm. And there were no injuries during the chase. Amazing that a 12 year old would have any idea how to operate That's, something like that. That really is amazing. Uh, uh, I mean, well, uh, they're not that hard. I mean, they're. I don't know. It's got like backwards, forwards, and push the gas and up I, and down. My son on can the, probably figure My 13 year old, but by the way, WL, if you ever steal a forklift, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> and the balls on him. I mean, to have cops following you for over oh, an, an hour. hour. Yeah. Well, here's the crazy This, this is the crazy thing to me about that whole story. So. You know, I'm. It didn't say what type of forklift it was. I'm. I'm assuming it was a propane. Yeah, right. I was going to uh, say because typically they're, they're either gas. propane or so they a are truck. a forklift truck. Yeah. Well, they might just call it that. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, uh, I would assume, and it, unless it was gasoline driven, I mean, they're usually yeah. electric or propane. Yeah. But uh, you know, if it were one of those two, there's no. I mean, I don't see how it even lasted an hour. Right. You know, yeah, that shit mean, don't go too far. I, I guarantee you, spike um, strips must have been gasoline of some sort. Spike strips wouldn't have worked on it. No they have rubber those hard t- those, tires. Yeah, they got the. It's just rubber. There's no I'm air. I'm betting the somebody's getting. Well, maybe. But just somebody about got the ridiculousness asking. of watching a 15 mile per hour chase with a 12 year old for over an hour for over an hour now, you know the cars he hit <laughs> i'm crazy. sure they was neighborhoods where the cars yeah, lined up on the street and he's just bam bam uh, there's a video of it out there i'm sure they're yeah, going to make somebody's going to make a video I'm game about it probably see if i can download it and post it for yeah. the peeps crazy yep a lot of michigan today a lot of wackiness in <laughs> michigan must have been a big night at the landing strip right Let's go back to NYC. 
New York City police have identified four family members who were found dead in an apparent murder-suicide at their Upper West Side apartment earlier this week. The NYPD confirmed that Edison Lopez, age 41, Alexandra Ola Wittick, age 40, and their two sons, Lucian, three, and Calvin, one, were all found stabbed to death inside the family's apartment on Monday afternoon. An NYPD spokesperson said that Edison and Ola, his fiance, were found dead with stab wounds to the neck. Lucian had stab wounds to his torso, and Calvin, the youngest son, was found dead with stab wounds around the body, police said. All four were pronounced dead at the scene. Their family members believe the killings happened a day earlier. The investigation remains open at this time. The gruesome scene was reportedly uh, first discovered on Monday by Lopez's father, Mario, and uh, Wittick's brother, Lucas. The two were attempting to drill through the family's apartment door after not hearing from them for over a day. Uh, and while they were doing that, they saw blood through the hole that they had made. They didn't see any bodies, but they saw the blood. They immediately called the police uh, who arrived quickly and uh, and discovered the four uh, the four bodies. Uh, this family is one of these things where everybody they talked to, they seemed perfectly happy. They'd been together a long time. the uh, the the kids were. Uh, we're great kids. The mother was a great. I mean, there's just no sign of trouble anywhere. Even the the parents speaking about them to uh, to all of the neighbors. Yet this uh, this thing happened. So, uh, and she was a the, the the mom was a preschool teacher, um, uh, who who was from Poland. So uh, Ola shared her culture and language and made the lives of her boys bright and full. Her boys loved playing with their toys, story time with mom and their two delightful babies, uh, all that loved them. The case resembles far too many others that we've covered here on Real Life Real Crime Daily. These family-wide murder-suicides have been given uh, a couple of names. They're either called familicide or sometimes family annihilation. And they're, believe it or not, keeping stats on these things now. There were 61 such cases in 2021. There were 72 such cases in 2022. And through August of this year, there are 64 cases, which is a pace that would lead to over 100 this year. Um, The killer in these cases, 94% of the time, is male. Uh, A gun is used in 86% of the cases. And uh, more than three quarters of the cases occurred in the South and Midwest. Texas had the most with 33, followed by Florida, Arizona, and Ohio. Familicide. I mean, who does Yeah. Uh, um, really disturbing trend with the numbers. And they, the reason they're studying is try to figure it out, like, you know, do profiles on it and try to cut it back. Like, all the suicides that— I ever worked. We never reported them on the news because, uh, like we talked about in the last show, or maybe it was this one. I don't remember, but the um, you know suicide of people that are there on that verge and they hear about it, they we you're giving them the powers the idea, of be yeah. yeah and and but this this like it's killing your whole family. Fuck, and we've we reported on it and, and it, it just blows my mind. No doubt, don't do it. And how brutal this stabbings hey, to the neck and uh, uh, what's asshole redhead basically killed his whole family. Oh, Murdoch's, except for, Murdoch's except definitely for, a it, uh, the, it, the one that, that, wasn't that would there. qualify. You don't have to. It's two or right, more two family more, members. Right, right, right. Crazy. <laughs> Tiffany, you can now take off that belt mm-hmm. and move freely around the cabin. All right, it's a Mile High Crime Monday, and look, this has been making major headlines. A man was arrested in an attack on a plane at Miami International Airport that left an American Airlines employee hospitalized. Bruno Machilavello, 29, was arrested on charges including aggravated battery, disorderly conduct, resisting an officer without violence. The incident happened last Monday night at Miami uh, International Airport. As Macha Lavello, who's from Connecticut, was on an American Airlines flight to LaGuardia in New York. At some point, uh, he told a flight attendant that he has panic attacks and wanted his medication that uh, was in his checked baggage. The attendant explained that she couldn't retrieve his medication 
And Matcha Lavello told her, look, planes down with panic attack in the past. Basically, is what he right. said. So he's basically saying, I'm going to take this plane now if I don't right. get my meds. Uh, so the attendant explained that she couldn't retrieve it again to him, and a decision was made to escort him off the plane. So it hadn't taken off yet. Um, but when American Airlines manager approached him, he started to scream and push the manager away from him. As he was leaving the plane, he started to punch the manager several times in her face, in her face, then threw her to the floor, causing her to hit her head on the jet bridge, which left, left her hospitalized and caused permanent scarring to her face and head. Uh, he then ran off the plane, pushing a gate attendant and causing her to fall on the floor and injure her hand. So this is like a melee right. at this point. Uh, officers who had been flagged down by American Airlines employees responded to the gate and saw him on the floor screaming and kicking as passengers were holding him down. Uh, so he resists officers, but he was eventually taken into custody before he was brought to a local hospital. He was expected to be booked into jail after being cleared, and that's exactly what happened. Um, and American Airlines released a statement. And it basically said law enforcement was requested at Miami International Airport due to a disturbance on the jet bridge where a customer assaulted a team member and basically went on to say, you know, how – Crazy. Our thoughts are always with our employees, right. et cetera. But yeah, all that over, you know, I need my medication. Why don't you put your medication in your fucking pocket. And it, look, these people that do these dumbass things yeah. on the spurt of the moment when they're pissed off. Right. He just ruined like a lot of his life here oh, yeah, doing yeah. something I, like this. These know. are federal issues. That's a, and gift that keeps on giving in the all year round. Well, well and probably half of the people sitting on that plane. Had <laughs> anti-anxiety yeah, had, had, yeah. Right, right. in their bag. Somebody could have just got up and said, "I've got a whatever." Yeah, I mean, it, you know, people just it seems like don't think a lot of people right. yeah. in these situations. Uh, so uh, that's uh, your mile high crime. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can now take off that belt and move freely around the cabin. Ooh. Woody Overton, it's a kinky crime. It is kinky crime time for Monday. And y'all, here we go. A Florida pest control and lawn care worker has been arrested after exposing himself mm. to two different women on two separate occasions. Mm. Now, the Polk County Sheriff's Office. Polk said, County. Ooh, there we go. A Grady Judd involved. Right. Here. Said 27 year old Tyler Mountain of Lake Wells, Florida, was arrested and charged with lewd exhibition and lewd exhibition to an elderly person for incidents stemming back from July and October. The Texas launched an investigation after a 76 year old woman told the Sheriff's Office that an employee of a local pest control and lawn services company exposed himself to her while he was inside her home. The woman said the man later identified as Mountain was inside so he could provide an estimate for pest control services. But when he stepped out of her bathroom, she told investigators Mountain had his privates out and asked for help because his zipper had broken. Mm. Man, how many times does that work for? Mm. I guess Jim? if it once worked once out of 100, Button fly. But that's what you gotta have. The woman refused. Yeah. Okay. And detectives reached out to the company Mountain worked for and were told by a regional manager that Mountain's employment had been terminated after learning of the complaint. The manager also <laughs> detected that it, it was the second such complaint they had received. <laughs> the yeah, manager, that's the bad time. part. Right? The, the, um, the suspect was arrested on November 22nd for the October incident, but according to the sheriff's office, the victim of a previous incident in Haines City was not available for detectives to speak with her about the matter. Mm. When she returned, a detective met with the victim and learned Mountain was at her home in July to perform lawn maintenance, lawn maintenance and while there, he exposed himself and, like the other incident, claimed his zipper was broken. Yeah. Can you help me, Mama? Yeah. My zipper's off. My train's off the track. Train's off the and track. Then, 
is saying why they arrested everybody his ass singing my on uh on never November twenty fifth for all the allegations. And this man used his work position to gain access to the homes of these women and then sexually exposed himself. This behavior is disgusting and predatory, our favorite sheriff. Grady Judd said. That's right. We believe it's possible that more victims of this man could be out there. And if that's the case, we want them to come forward. And we know Sheriff Grady Judd. He means business. He means business. And it's. He don't put up with no kinkiness. You you better believe if he did it twice, he did it 200 times. That's right. Did you get the uh, sheriff on the shelf yet? Nope. They're they're supposed to be sent. uh, No, no. She messaged back. She said they're sold out. Oh, all right. Completely sold out. There are none to be bought. Does he not understand his popularity? Make enough of those things. Um, Well, I'm, I'm. Going into some licensing products with Mr. Judd, there Sheriff you go. Judd, there you go. as we speak. You know the 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 problem there. It, well, there's a lot of problems there, but one of them is, I mean, you're just if you're in an exterminator's outfit, like if we spice it up and role play at home, I'm not coming in as the Orkin man. I mean, that's not oh something God. that's going to get her going. <laughs> oh I'm going to need. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, you the be- pool boy pool boy thing maybe <laughs> pool <boy>. works. <laughs> No, the pool boy thing you could pull off, but yeah. you, you can't come in as the working man thinking nah. you're going to get yeah. the edge. What about the fireman? Oh, fireman definitely works. What about the pizza delivery man? I need someone I think to hold that's my a tough act. sell. I think a that's pizza delivery man, well. Nah. DoorDash. That'd have to be pizza. DoorDash. <laughs> could be anything. <laughs> no, I think the food delivery guys are out. I think. Uh, I happen to have your condiments. Pool, yeah. bo- pool boy's a big one, <laughs> but not, uh, not the working man. All right, let's do some dumb criminals. How about that? What are you giving the dumb criminal shout out? He can't wait for it. It's technically a violation, but I'll let it go this time. And we're going to go a little bit off script here and do a little dumb companies episode. Yeah. Hopefully and- none will be future sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> this one might have been, but they won't now. The owner of the Red Lobster chain. Thai Union Group posted huge losses in both third quarter follow and third quarter following similarly bad numbers in second quarter. The chain's chief financial officer had recently stated that the company had increased overall sales revenue and celebrated Red Lobster's endless shrimp promotion as the big reason for the sales growth. So their top line sales grew a ton, but their earnings were way the hell down. So more money was spent in the restaurants, but their profits. Yeah, went that's not way, good. Got a business down. real quick when things like that happen. So, with overall sales growing and such a great success with the endless shrimp, many on the street were shocked to learn of the company's earnings losses. That's when they called in the forensic accountants. Company leadership was surprised to learn that their all you can eat endless shrimp promotion was a bit too generous. The Endless Shrimp offer became a permanent item on the Red Lobster menu in June, and for just $20, diners could indulge in as much of the shellfish as they could stomach. Wow. Foot traffic at the chain increased by 4% after this move in June, which, understandably, that's why top line uh, sales grew. They had 4% more people in the stores. The problem, however, was that too many of those people were ordering the Endless Shrimp promotion. In fact, way more than the company had anticipated. Likely because the deal went viral on social media platforms like TikTok, where people showed off how much they ate to get their money's worth. So you had all kinds of people uh, on TikTok and Instagram posting, you know, I I had 50 shrimp, I had 75 shrimp, I had 40 shrimp, whatever. So Red Lobster reacted and bumped the price of their endless shrimp up to $25 in a desperate move to reclaim some of those losses. But... uh, But it was, you know, it's way too late. They didn't do it until uh, like a week ago. So maybe it'll help the end of fourth quarter. But internal Red Lobster data shows that the company calculates about a dollar per shrimp all in an expense. So the shrimp itself, the all the service they provide, all of their overhead, all of their aggregated expenses, about a dollar a shrimp. Therefore, if you're going to do an all you can eat special on shrimp, you don't want people eating more than 20 shrimp, right? Well, have you seen the size of 
some of these people that are participating in this promotion, it looks like many, many people decided they could stomach 30, 40, or even 50 shrimp to put this, be, to put this big uh, dent into the profits. Reminds me of an old marketing adage, know your customer, and for that Red Lobster, you get endless banjos. Smallest fucking shrimp ever. You, you wouldn't, I would use that, their size shrimp for, for bait. Yeah, they are small, right? I use them for bait. So, but, but they're, especially if you're using small shrimp, they're, if their cost is a dollar, a shrimp fully let, baked, let, you can't. Let me tell you how they do it. Uh, shrimp are, are measured by count per pound, right? The the lower the count, the bigger the shrimp. And, and those fuckers have got to be 20, 30 count for a pound yeah. or more. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't Baby spit shrimp. on it. And, of course, you're not going to find red lobster in South Louisiana anyway. Or you could. Yeah, they have one. They have, yeah, one. But have one here. They had one a long time ago. But, uh, uh, the only thing – when I was in Utah working in Salt Lake City with my good Mormon people, that uh, every Friday when it was payday, everybody wanted to go to Red Lobster. Boy, and I can't couldn't stand it being from South Louisiana, have our own fresh seafood. But they, right. you'd think it was their grandmother's shrimp on the table. But these are such basic numbers that should be to a big corporation like this, with all the locations they have, yeah. everything else. They, this data should be crunched five hundred ways, and you should know. Exactly what you have to charge yeah. to. Th- this was probably one of those calculations where if we do this, we're going to bring so many more people in the store, and most of them, and the rest of well, most of them, are going to order off the menu right. where we've got high margin items. And, and but, that's why the criminal part is, you know, the, actually, it's not even criminal. The people put it on TikTok. If I went in there and was serious about eating shrimp, I bet you I could eat well over a hundred of those shrimp. Oh yeah, yeah. two hundred probably. No. Come on, you think? Come on, dude. Oh yeah, two hundred. I, 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 I bet you I can. Dude, I crawfish can eat. are the same size, yeah, yeah. and you know, eat, those shrimp. Eat five pounds of that. Yeah, no doubt. Is that is the average? And like it's oysters, a lot of crawfish, and then I can sit down and eat six dozen raw oysters. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyway, they're dumb criminals, or are I don't know how they're the dumb criminal com- part, dumb corporations, dumb corporations, right? I think I played it once, but I'm gonna play it again. Since you took Mike's intro, My intro. Oh, he gets two dumb criminals. Name. All right. There you have it. Any yeah. final thoughts, Woody? Just love everybody. Um, please continue to like and share. Go leave us a review. Uh, uh, oh, hey, go read our reviews because oh, we've been calling everything from a racist <laughs> to whatever to whatever. And a lot of people gave great reviews, and we appreciate that. I mean, the one star. Um, I'm pretty sure Woody Everton knows himself, and I'm not racist or homophobic or whatever the fuck you. They called you racist. Maybe it wasn't me, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm pretty sure I don't. I mean, I, would, just I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I hadn't read them in a while anyway, but I wouldn't put up with it, anything that was said on the one star. So the one stars, you can go fuck yourselves. If uh, five stars, I don't care. I mean, if you want to leave one stars, it's not gonna hurt my feelings. I got a point. If I mess your day up so bad that you're gonna leave me one star, okay. Is uh, that- uh, but we, I loved you then. I hope you love me now. That's it. But you obviously don't. Somebody gave me a point two five stars. That's is that possible? That's twenty five percent of a one star. That shouldn't be allowed. Oh uh, yeah, I'm no, just kidding. I don't know. Hey, but seriously, that just all joking around, all joking aside. Love y'all. Thank you so much for letting us do what we do. Um, bless. Yep. Well, I'm headed out to Red Lobster. See y'all there. <laughs> yeah. Let us know how many pounds you put down. How many shrimp? And until I'm going for time. Woody's 200 record. There you go. Yeah. Till next time, I'm Jim Chapman. Nah, hey, we should go. We, we should go somewhere and do an eat off <laughs> on Megan <laughs> on video. An, an eat off. <laughs> a meat off, beat off. <laughs> with with us, a, a shrimp or whatever. Us three. Uh-huh. We invite the public to watch us gouge ourselves. Oh uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure they'll be knocking the or doors hot, down. Hot stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could we could take on that guy. The three of us together could take on what's his name? The guy that wins the hot dog thing every time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not the little Chinese guy, I Japanese guy. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. What's his name? I but he didn't win it this year. Somebody else beat him. Really? Mm-hmm. No longer champion. Nathan's hot dogs. All right, yeah. but I wouldn't do it hot dog. Love y'all. Thanks so much.
Till next time, I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Everton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Your host of Real Life, Real Crime Daily. Peace. Aglets.